Okay, so this, these are the instructions for completing the standard time uh, test room report. Um, the uh, rooms, I'm sorry, the test coordinator will have completed this part here. So the uh, ACT high school code, the date, uh, I'm sorry, the state, no writing. We do no writing in Louisiana. The name of the school, the test date. So on for this year, it's the March 17th. The room supervisor and the room. And then uh, indicate that we're testing at school. Okay, and then um, the number of examinees seen in the room will be completed at the end, and then the number of staff in this room as well. So we're going to do this part at the end, and that's done by the, uh, the uh, room supervisor. Okay, now before testing, before testing, we're going to complete A through C to record an account for all test booklets provided in this room. So the multiple choice test booklets, you're going to include the serial number, the first serial number. So the first serial number is, um, and I'm making this up, 1,000, uh, let's say it's this. Okay, and the last serial number in your group is, let's say this. All right, so you have um, 21 booklets. So starting here to here, that's going to be 21. Okay, now... So that goes here. So then, so then you're going to indicate how many, how many test booklets. Oh, and it also says this additional serial numbers not within the sequence above, if any, um, but hopefully it's within that sequence. So then you indicate the number of booklets that you obtain. So you can put 21 here. Okay, we don't do writing, so that's going to be left blank. Then your the room supervisor is going to sign. So this is where the room supervisor signs right here. The test coordinator initials. All right, so that part indicates that that uh, the room supervisor is, in, is is indicating that he or she received 21 test booklets. Okay, then after testing. All right, so this will be important. After testing, you would then do this. You would, for the multiple, remember, you don't do writing. So for the multiple choice tests, you would in, indicate the number of multiple choice test booklets that were used. So let's say out of the 21 out of the 21, you use, let's say, 18. And then unused, you would say 3. And then you put 21. These two things must match up. These two things must match up. Okay, now let's, we don't do writing. Let's talk about the answer document. Okay, so this is used only. So we're only talking about used. So let's suppose that, that um, and remember, there are 18 test booklets used. So let's suppose that um, number to score, let's say the number to score is 17. And then here, number voided is 1. So it's possible you could have voided an answer document for various reasons, for irregularities. Okay, so then, uh, and let's say number replaces 0. So um, in your training, you were, you were uh, told about answer documents that are voided versus answer documents that are replaced. Okay, so then it's, it says attach the AD to the regularity report. So AD means answer document. So for each one that's voided and for each one that's replaced, there needs to be an irregularity report. Hopefully, these will be zeros. But if it's not zeros, then you need an irregularity report for each of these. Okay, so attach answer document to regularity report. Attach answer document to irregularity report. So talk to the... Uh, room uh, to the test coordinator to determine how to do this. Do not staple. The, room, the test coordinator will complete it along with you. Okay, so then the test coordinator does this after testing. So after testing, the test coordinator would indicate that they are returning back to accountability. The multiple choice test, we don't do writing, so that should be left blank. Answer documents, the test room report, the seating diagram, the timing report, the roster, there, you shouldn't have any of those, so that should be blank. And then any irregularity reports, if um, there is any. Hopefully there won't be any. And then at the end, so the test coordinator would then sign here, so that's the test coordinator, and the room supervisor would initial. Okay, so make sure, test coordinator, room supervisor. So room supervisor, you, you are going to initial here at the end of testing. On the end of that day, you're going to initial here, and you're going to sign here. So that's room supervisor. Test coordinator, you're going to initial here, 
and you're going to sign here. All right, so I take care of the talk discussion about that page. Now let's go to the back part. So this is the roster, so this needs to be completed before testing. So all these names needs to be on here before testing. Okay, now room supervisor and proctor. Um, at the entrance of the room, do not do not let students into the room without um, without checking for ID or without filling this part out. So if if Michael comes in and and he has a picture ID, a valid picture ID, then you check this off. If um, uh, you recognize a student, then you then let's say Cynthia comes in, you recognize the student, you put an R, and then your initials. If Bobby comes, uh, if Bobby doesn't show up, you put a little dash here. So the little dash, any dashes, would indicate that the students were absent on that test day, and they would do makeup. All right. So for each of those students, you're either gonna you're either gonna uh, put a P. It really. Um, you can check it off or you can put a P, it does not matter, however you do this. Um, but here though, if you, reg if, if you let the student in because you recognize a student, you must put your initials. Your initials have to be there. If you don't recognize a student, the student does not have the picture ID, but there is a staff member that recognizes a student, then, um, this, then you would say an R and the staff member's initials. All right, so that's how you complete that part. Only those students that are present, so see these students are absent, only those students that are present should be entered into the room. All right, do not let the students seat themselves. That was part of your training. Do not let the students seat themselves. The proctor will need to put the student at a desk. Do not let the students seat themselves. Okay, let's talk about filling this part out. So the room supervisor will fill this part out. So that's the seating diagram part. On page, I think it's on page um, 8. So on page 8 of your administration manual for standard time, on page 8, in your training, you are told about seating arrangements, acceptable, unacceptable. So make sure you familiarize yourself with this. So you're going to indicate the room supervisor will indicate the, uh, the room type, so single level. Hopefully you don't have multi-level. It should always be single level. You will indicate whether the student took the test at a student desk or a table. You check off one of these and make sure it says inches, but you can change it to feet. So just make sure you indicate um, the number of feet or inches for each of those. Notice that you have to fill this part out, so from shoulder to shoulder, the minimum is three feet. So do not let students sit next to each other where shoulder to shoulder is less than three feet. So these should be at least three feet. If it's four feet, you put four feet. And then head to head, remember we are talking about single level, so head to head should be three feet as well. At least three feet, no less than three feet. Okay, let's talk about filling this part out. So, um, when when you hand out the test booklets, so that's going to be on page, uh, I think it's 19, yeah, on page 19, page 19. When you hand out the test booklets, it must be done in a certain way. So make sure you read page 19 very carefully. So you must start with the first serial number and then in order. You go in order just like this. So first serial number. And notice that MC stands for multiple choice. W stands for writing. We don't do writing. We only do multiple choice. So put the serial number here. So whatever the serial number may be, put that here. Put the serial number here. The next one should be in sequence. Should be in sequence. Next serial number here, in sequence. And so on. So 45, 46, 47, so on. Okay. And then... And then it is a good idea for the W, where the W is, to put the student's name. So if Jane Doe is here, you put Jane Doe. If um, Michael Sam is here, you put Michael Sam, and so on. 
but it is important that the serial number is listed on this page. It is a good idea to put the student's name just in case there's an investigation we can determine which student sat here very easily. Okay, now let's talk about this part here. So at the end, of, so the one, two, three, four indicates the um, the test. So this is test one, this is test two, this is test three, this is test four. Keep in mind that these tests must be done in a certain order. These tests must be done in a certain order. So test one is ELA, test two is math, test three is reading, and test four is science. Uh, make sure that's the correct order. Um, so it's on this page, page 33. So test one is English, test two is math, test three is reading, and test four is science. It must be done in that order. So that test one must be given before test two and so on. Okay. Notice that the uh, these little symbols here, that's what you would see on the top of the page in the test booklet on each page. Whether it, if you're on test one, then each page should have a box. If you're on test two, each page should have a triangle and so on. Okay, and then here are the minutes. So we're, they're already telling you what the minutes are. So all these students are standard time students. If there were accommodations, they would be in a different area. So these are accommodation. Uh, they, these are standard time times. So test one is only for 45 minutes. Test two is for 60 minutes. Test three is for 35 minutes. Test four is for 35 minutes. There is no writing. We don't do writing. Okay, now let's go back over here. So at the end of test one, do, beginning of test two, whenever whenever you do this, but during test two, beginning of test two, um, it really needs to be done right at the beginning of test two. So beginning of test two, you walk around and you check to see how many questions have not been answered, have not been answered. So Jane Doe didn't answer, you estimate. Don't, don't sit there counting, you just estimate. Because you could have about 20 students in this room and it will take too long to actually count. So just estimate how many students. You do that at the beginning of test two. Don't wait too long. And you estimate the number of questions that have not been answered. It's easier just to estimate the number that have not been answered. So five have not been answered, you put five. If for this person, 10 have not been answered, you put 10. If for this person, the person answered everything you put zero and the person answered everything you put zero and so on and then you can do the process okay now let's go to this one so you're going to indicate the start time so if you start at uh, let's say 7 51 a.m you put that there that's the beginning of test one now this this does not include when you when uh, you distribute materials. So remember, be very careful. So if you go to page, um, let's see, this is on page forty-eight. Page forty-eight are the directions before they begin the test. So th this is not the time you put. So you read all the directions. Remember, anything in bold, anything that's shaded, you read. Anything that's shaded, you read verbatim to them. So everything shaded, you read to them. If you go to page 50, page 50, this is where it says test one English. So then you read this. You, you tell them test one is English. Do not begin work until I tell you. The work, you are to work only on test one. If you finish early, place your answer document inside your test booklet and close the cover. You may now break the seal, but do not open the booklet. Then you say this, you have 45 minutes to work on this test. Open your booklet to test one and read the directions and begin work. So this is where you begin timing. So this part here, whenever whenever you do that part, so if you finish reading this part, let's say at 7.51, you put 7.51. Okay, now you need to indicate how many minutes are remaining at the time here when five minutes are remaining. So this you can use this. As to do this. Okay, so let's talk about this part. So this is the, the timing for uh, test one. This is the timing for test two, test three, and four. We don't do writing. So remember, you start at 7.51 here. So you go to 7, You so you go to 51 right here. Uh, let's see where 51 is. 51 is here. 
associated with 51 is 36. So this is your start. See, there's a start column and then there's a stop column. So your start column, you went at 751. So you do seven. So you do right here, 751, right here. And then you're going to end at 836. Okay, so you're going to keep that in mind. You're going to end at 836. Okay, now let's suppose that that it takes all the students that room this whole time. It takes the whole time to take this test. So you're going to indicate. 836. That's when you said, that's when you told them to stop. Okay? Five minutes before, you have to let them know how many minutes are remaining. So five minutes before would be 831. All right, so it took, took at least one student to take the whole time. So if it takes at least one student to take the whole time, you have to give them the whole time. So 45 minutes would be the whole time. All right, so then you begin test two. You do the same thing with test two. So you go to test two, which is on page 51. You read verbatim everything that's there. They talk about prohibited calculators and all. They have 60 minutes. So when you see, when you see, when you read right here, turn to test two now, read the direction, begin work. This is where you begin timing. So let's suppose, let's suppose that on test two, you begin you you they began the test let's say at 842 okay so at 842 you go to test 2 42 minutes is here so you put an 8 here they're going to finish at 942 942 now again if if at least one student needs the whole time you can put 942 here and then 5 minutes before so it'll be 9.37. If all the students finish before time is actually over, then you would put the stop. If they finish, let's, let's say that, that the last student finished at um, 9.15. All right, you put 9.15 here. Um, then that 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 would probably I didn't mean 915 because that's to uh, let's say 930 you put 930 here this probably you would not put anything there um, because you they finished before this time if all of them finish before the hour before 60 minutes then you can begin the next test again but if at least one student needs the whole time, you must give them the whole time. You cannot start the next test until all students have finished the test. So it takes 60 minutes, it takes 60 minutes. Then you go to the next test. If, if all the students needed here was just 30 minutes, then you just put 30 minutes. Whatever you start here plus 30 minutes goes here. And then you can start the next test. But you can only start the next test if all the students have finished within that time period. So 45 minutes is the maximum for test one. 60 minutes is the maximum for test two. 35 minutes is the maximum for test three. 35 minutes is the maximum for test four. You have to fill this part out. You have to fill this part out. And if need be, if, if all the time was taken, you got to fill this part out. If all the students finish before time is called, you indicate here when the last student took the test and you can move on to the next test. Also keep in mind that lunch, you cannot have lunch until after all tests have been given. There is a break between test two and three. That was discussed in your training. That was a break between test two and three at most 15 minutes. You can have a snack for them between during the break, but it must be consumed outside the classroom. Again, there's a break between test two and three. Lunch can only be provided after test four. You cannot take lunch during testing. Okay, so, um, and then you, hopefully you won't, you will say no here. So uh, hopefully you will say there is no irregularity report. If there is, you have to have a discussion with your test coordinator to talk about the procedures. Okay, so that should take care 
of, I think we've taken care of all these. Oh, and then you would do the same thing for test two right here. So at the end of test two or right at the beginning of test three, you would indicate how many, how many answers, how many questions have not been answered. So if, if all the questions have been answered here, you put zero. If two questions have not been answered here, you put zero. Um, you put two and so on. Now, if during any test, if during any test you uh, walk around, again, you have to monitor constantly. You and your, the room supervisor and the proctor have, the, have to monitor constantly. If you recognize that for this person, at some time during a future test, all the answers have been marked, then this is an irregularity. The student's test is voided, so you need to contact the test coordinator immediately. So if, if, and that's the reason for this. So for this person here, let's say in test three, you, f you see that, that 10 is no longer accurate, then that means the student went back and answered some more questions. That's an irregularity. Student will be dismissed for uh, an irregularity and cannot do the makeup. So if you find, if you find that a student went back to work on a previous test, you need to inform the test coordinator immediately. Okay, so that should take care of this, the completion of this uh, test room work for a standard time.